Now, Royal Ascot is set to return in a matter of weeks. Obviously, it's going to be behind closed doors, so quite different now. It's over five days. A uh, maximum of 12 runners in each race. Uh, a man that's experienced uh, Royal Ascot many times. Own uh, breeder, the founder of Rebel Racing, um, is with us now. Uh, and his name's Phil Cunningham. Uh, morning, Phil. How are you? Morning. Yeah, very well, Paul. Thank you very much. Yourself? Yeah, I'm really well. Listen, thanks for joining us. Listen, I've got a question for you straight off the bat here. Rebel racing. Is it beca- a rebel? Is that why? Is there any reason for that? Is this you, Phil? Uh, well, no, I was very fortunate to own a horse in 2005 called Rebel Rebel. I used to name a lot of them after Souls. Yes, I am uh, aware and, of that. Uh, yeah. yeah, he finished second in the Guineas. And then from him, uh, my next, uh, I suppose, uh, big success was, was Cockney Rebel. We won with 2,000 Guineas. English and Irish. Yeah. And and then the sort of the rebel theme same up, you know, put, sort of followed on after that for me. I'm still trying it's to work lucky. It. I'm thinking here, look, we were got Rebel Rebel, David Bowie, Cockney Rebel. Um I can't think of any other rebels in music. Is there any more? No, well the Rebel Yell was obviously a Billy, Billy Idol. Idol. That name that name had already gone, so I was unfortunately I couldn't have that. So <laughs> uh, that... we had to sort of deviate away from the from the song theme and uh yeah, we have Rebel Surge. Uh, we've had uh, Sefton Rebel, which is the name of our stable. Sure. And uh, yeah, then finally we've run out of Rebels, and so uh, we've reverted back to songs in the name. But you did. You got a Tyson Fury, though. There's something named after Tyson Fury. You got a horse, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's unraced three-year-old. Um, uh, on our wildest dreams, he's entered in the Derby, but obviously I think that's going to come too quickly for us. And uh, but we'll wait and see. But yeah, very fortunate to uh, to, to know a, 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 fr- a friend of mine, uh, Joe Ricotta, who sponsors Tyson. I know Joe very and, well. Uh, yes. Oh, amazing! And so uh, yeah, obviously a fellow Spurs fan. Yeah. And um, Joe uh, managed to introduce me to Tyson, and uh, he gave us his permission to use the name. Thank and he you. couldn't be a better named horse. He's the biggest horse we've ever had. He's five hundred and fifty kilos. And he's always a cracker. Cool. You should have Sweet Caroline then running that, running alongside him. It would work perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, how do you name them? I mean, what, what happens? Is there? Do you sit down uh, and go through uh, iTunes and think, okay, we'll have that one, we'll have that one, we'll have that one, or is, much- is it by committee? How does it work? The naming of horses. Well, very much so. And unfortunately, with the uh, sort of the VHA or, or, or whether these who administer it for them. Yeah, I mean, they have a process and a naming process you have to go through where names haven't been used before, they're not trademarked and the like. And obviously, the more horses you have, it's becoming an increasingly more difficult... I, um, I can imagine, because there are thousands, with. aren't there? There are, there are. So, uh, yeah, so we, we go through that process. And as and when I come up with a good name, you can pre-register them. Yes. Which is what I have been doing, and then obviously waiting for the right horse to suit the name. So how many... What Can you give us some ideas of, of some of the names that, that we can expect in the future? Uh, well, the, the two-year-olds for this year, um, we have uh, Wings of a Dove after the Madness record. Excellent. Um, she's a lovely two-year-old filly. She'll hopefully be making her debut in the next couple of weeks. And uh, in our wildest dreams, she'll be Royal Ascot bound. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, uh, Ocean Eyes after the, the Billy Eilish song. Right. Another nice uh, two-year-old. Um, and we've got Big Nasty this year. And I don't know if you saw that in the in the media, but he very kindly gave his, his permission. And he's been down to see the horse. Oh, which, really? Uh, was it was an experience? So, do you actually uh, do you actually have to ask permission, or is it just a nice thing to do? No, you need to ask permission. Right. Okay. So, tell us about when Big Nasty comes here. Oh, well, he popped out one evening uh, to Newmarket with a, with a couple of his friends, and yeah, it was fun. Very very fun. <laughs> and we went for, okay. for a little bit of dinner uh, shortly afterwards. Yeah. Uh, in in uh, the Bedford Lodge Hotel in Newmarket. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Oh. Well, what a really, really fun guy. Okay. Phil, say no more. It sounds like it was a fun evening, but that's about as far as this is going to go on this, right? Well, the, the, the biggest shame is going to be that, obviously, he won't be able to join us at Royal Ascot if, uh, if the horse was to line up there, which um, I think that would have been an event. I, 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 think, I think you're probably right. Now, tell me about Ascot. How's Ascot now? Uh, how much fun is that? I know you're looking forward to going back there, but it's going to be a strange situation. Yeah, very much. It's, you know, it's obviously one of the highlights of the racing calendar not just because of the quality of racing, but because of the social event. Yeah. And uh, obviously that's going to be taken away this year. Um, but in all honesty, Paul, we, we'd take anything. We just can't wait to get back racing. Fine. And and when uh, are your first horse is going, well, should obviously the announcement come, which we are expecting, of course, very soon. Oh, very much so. And, you know, if it wasn't to go ahead now, I, I, I think um, it's going to shatter so many people. Of course. There's, there's not much doubt, the weekend. 
I, I would hope not. Um, but obviously, you know, nobody wants the sort of tenth fate or be complacent. But I think, yeah, obviously, racing will be back on the first of June up at Newcastle. Uh, we've made the decision as a yard that we're going to try and stay local for the benefit of the staff and, sure. and uh, obviously the, the horses themselves. Um, uh, yeah, and it will be a different experience. So I think our first runners will be at Yarmouth on Wednesday. Okay. And then the show hits the road from there, straight back to Newmarket for the Guineas weekend. How have the past uh, few months been with you and, and, and been with work and everybody that works with you? Uh, obviously, the racing side is just one part of, of, of my work life, as it, as it were, now. Yeah. But in terms of just the racing, it's it's been interesting. I mean, we've decided and made the decision that we weren't turning any horses out. Uh, we were fortunate from that respect. So we've managed to keep ticking over. And I think, you know, with most people and most of the things at the moment, it, it seems to be, you know, it's the uncertainty. Sure. You know, when is life going to go back to normal and what is normal if it will go back? Fine. So I, I think, you know, once you've got the definitive date in your mind of the 1st of June, everyone's working to that date. Um, you know, I, I think it gives everybody a focus. And we were fortunate enough last week to get the calendar for the, for the rest of the month of June. And it allows us to pre-plan ahead. So I think what we're doing at the moment now is really just looking at what are the sort of ascot possibles. Sure. They need to be, you know, that need a run. Um, obviously, so they're the focus, I think, for most training yards in the first week. So it will be very, very busy. Um, and then after that, I hopefully we'll be able to, to get back to a, as much of a normality as we can with the revised fixture list. Sure, let's hope so, Phil. And uh, with ascot... Do you go? Can you go and are you told by uh, the BHA how many people actually can turn up when it's a behind closed doors meeting? How does that work? Well, I think in some of the uh, sort of the plans that were being put along, it's changed frequently, um, and, and, you know, and rightly so, obviously, because the whole world is changing on a daily basis. But yeah. um, I believe the current state of play is that owners are not permitted to attend. OK. But, but that's being reviewed uh, regularly. But if you do, you have to wear a top hat. Uh, normally you would do, but I'm not sure if that would be the case this <laughs> I can year. Imagine. Yeah, obviously, Listen, more priority on a face mask this year. It's it? behind closed doors, but you're still going to wear the top hat as long as it goes with a face mask. Well, let's, I think I, I think we'll even be wearing them in our house if we have to watch it from home. Let's just hope things get going and uh, things go well for you, Phil. Really good to speak to you. Thanks a lot for your time. Really appreciate it. Cheers, Paul. Thank you. Take care, Phil Cunningham there, um, who runs Rebel Racing.